Day four involves vision. And for this, um, I know it seems like I've dumped on D&D for quite a bit in this series, and spoiler warning, I'm probably going to do that again, because I have my gimmicks to maintain. But for this, I want to talk about how the vision in trying to do game design in first-party D&D is fraught with dangers. It's almost like walking on eggshells in some regards, simply because a lot of times with that kind of setup, you've got way too many people to answer to. I mean, obviously, Wizards of the Coast is part of Hasbro. It's a publicly traded company, so you've got to answer to the shareholders. At the same time, you have to answer to the people who have been around for years. And you have to somehow find ways to grow the audience. So because of the fact that you've got so many people pulling in so many different directions, you end up with the um, least resistance approach. This is ultimately why, while I may bash Wizards of the Coast, rightfully so for some of, for some of their things, on some level I feel sorry for them because they can't really make the game that they'd want to, simply due to the fact that they've got so many people to answer to. I think this is also the reason why you have such strong entries within the third party. Because the third party doesn't have to deal with 30 years of tradition. They don't have to deal with having to answer to some shareholder. The only thing that they have to do is make sure that they put in the open gaming license blurb, which nobody ever reads anyways. And beyond that, beyond that they're good. So they can, take, they can take it and then they can do what they want. And I know Wizards of the Coast has tried to do this whole... Dungeon Masters um, guild thing. But truth be told, you don't even really need to do that. And most of the most of the third party um, D&D folk that I've talked with, they don't. Most of them just use the open gaming license and they're fine. And it's actually better off that way because you're going to probably be making more money with, these, with whatever sales you do get. Because Wizards of the Coast isn't going to be taking a chunk out of it. Now... Obviously, one bookshelf is going to take their cut um, for obvious reasons, but you've got less hands in the pot in that particular situation. I think this is also the reason why I've kind of attempted to emphasize games that either utilize a system outside of D20 or do so in a way that's unique when it comes to mechanics, because it's it's much easier to come up with a good campaign setting than is to come up with a good set of mechanics in some ways. And what's especially important is that with that set of mechanics, you're not in a situation where you're forcing a um, play style that doesn't match what the narrative is going to be. Like, I'm always going to be a big fan of integrating narrative with mechanics. That's why I don't really do the whole whether story versus gameplay is more important, because it's a yin-yang situation. You focus too much on one, you focus too much on the other, the whole work ends up suffering. Although, if you have to focus on one or the others, I'd say, me- I'd say mechanics are more important, because I can go back and play Pac-Man. I'm not going back to play Dear Esther, no matter how good its story allegedly is. Although, in my personal opinion, it isn't all that good. And, ultimately, it comes down to... A lot of the people that I've had on, and the people that I hope to have on in the future, have a very clear design idea about what they want to do with their particular game. Um, it's one of those things where certain systems are a little bit more flexible on establishing certain visions. Um, Savage Worlds is definitely a case in point when it comes to this. I'd say you're you're going to have a lot less that baggage that you're going to need to deal with as opposed to other games. But it is always important to have a vision and then follow it. I'm reminded of the three questions thing that I first found out about through John Wick. What is your game about? How does it go about doing that? And what behaviors does your game try and encourage and or discourage? And I do think a lot of designers would do well to not answer those questions, but have those questions in the back of your mind. 